babies. Currently kind of YOLOing. This is probably something you do not want to do. Uh-oh. What's up everyone? I'm filming from sunny Budapest today. A few of you have asked things like, how do you budget? How do you stay under budget? What apps do you use? So I wanted to do a video on exactly those things. So I want to start off with how we got to the budget number we live under, how we make sure we stay under budget. I want to spend a good chunk of time actually going through the numbers and going through some of the apps and tools I use. And then I want to end this with kind of talking about upcoming changes I see and how that'll impact our budget. So how I came up with our current budget is probably a little weird. And I don't want to spend too much talking about fire because I think that gets its own video. But a few years ago or whenever the heck I heard about fire from the first time, there was this blogging couple and they shared kind of their annual budget. And at the time it was 40,000 Canadian dollars, which again at the time came out to roughly 30,000 US dollars. So that comes out to 2,500 US dollars per month. And I basically thought if these two people can live on that, like so can I and that was with kind of traveling around the world it was more or less changing where they lived each month and that's kind of how I came up with our budget so we spent the back half of 2021 in Mexico filming vlogging everything but at the same time we were always testing the budget and that number hadn't changed again categories moved around a bit but the overall number hadn't changed. So that is how I came up with the budget and our current budget today is 2,500 US dollars per month. Now that's how we came up with the budget and while that may be semi-important to you if you have no clue what your budget is, maybe what's more important is how do we stay under budget? A few things I do that I think help stay under budget. Some of these might be really obvious, so apologies here. The first one is, when things go up, other things have to go down. So what goes up must go down. And what I mean by that is if you splurge on accommodation, you need to tweak your other categories. You can't just say, you know, I spent $1,000 a month on food. And even though I went over in every other category, I'm going to spend $1,000 a month anyways. That's not true. You can do that. It's just not going to work out for your budget long term. So an example is the current Airbnb or apartment I am behind me cost something like 15 or $1,600 for the month. We typically allocate 1,250. So we went over by several hundred dollars in this category. So we tweaked things down. I think I reduced transportation. We reduced food and beverage, but it might be obvious, but as you tackle things or if you incur expenses you know about, you need to tweak other things as much as you can. And that goes into the second kind of main point on how I stick to my budget. So. What goes up must come down is one. Number two would be dealing with variable and fixed costs. And I want to put fixed in quotes because like nothing is really fixed for us. But what I mean by fixed are like the big, like maybe single ticket items. So when we do Airbnb, we know what that costs. We are usually paying per month or per four weeks or 28 nights. And well before we get there, I basically know what that's going to cost. Transportation is similar-ish with like big ticket items, whether that be an international flight, whether that be an international or long distance bus. It's harder to forecast things like public transportation or Uber. Obviously we can use historical data, but the main ones are going to be accommodation and mostly international flights. The more variable stuff that's a lot harder to measure would be things like miscellaneous or for us it's food and beverage. And again, we've got a lot of historical data we can work with, but it's a lot more challenging. So really identifying the fixed stuff and then adapting or adjusting to understand like, hey, we spent this much on flights this month or accommodation was high. So we need to kind of retract on things, mostly food and beverage, mostly eating out and alcohol. And again, probably not rocket science here, but these are the ways I think about it. And these are how we've never gone over budget yet. This next one is extremely helpful. And I think everything's kind of cascading and segueing well. This is probably something you do not want to do, but probably the best advice I can share. So we know that if one category goes up, another one has to go down. We know that fixed stuff is easier to deal with than variable. So how do we deal with all this? And the way I deal with it is I log every expense daily, especially well in general, but this is especially helpful for things like coffee or an Uber or breakfast or lunch or going out for beers or a cocktail. When you log everything daily, it gives you a real time view of how your budget's looking in real time. If you used an app like Mint or something that aggregates after the fact, 
I don't know how you're going to stay under budget unless you have really just good intuition about things or like guilt, feel guilt. But because I log everything every time it happens, so like if we go grocery shopping, like later that day or right after, I'll just like log it. You start to get a sense of how you're doing for the week or the month. And another thing we can talk about when we jump into my spreadsheet is I kind of set percentage markers because the bulk of the spend I do, especially for food and beverage is Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So even though a month has 28 to 31 days, I kind of look at how many Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays it has. And then as I'm going through the month, I have my percentage spend per category and I also have how many of those like weekend, yes, I know Thursday and Friday are technically not, days are there. And that gives me kind of two looks into my percentage spend and how it stacks up to where I should be. If I'm over, I need to pull back. If I'm under, which I typically am, as the month goes on, it gives me the flexibility to go out and have more drinks or order another cocktail with dinner or eat at nicer places on the list. So. This is probably the most actionable thing. I know most of you are probably like, I do not want to log every day. And what I will say is when you do something every day and even better is right after you order coffee, right after you get pastries for breakfast, right after you go out for lunch, right after you buy laundry detergent, when you're standing in line or walking home or like dropping your stuff off or you have any downtime, just log the individual thing and it becomes such a breeze that you don't have to catch up on it. Even if you miss a few days, it becomes a chore and it's kind of like snowballs, but if you just chop it up piece by piece, it has helped me a ton. And just being real time and logging everything gives me a really good picture on, do I need to scale back my eating and drinking? Should we not have splurged on accommodation? Like, and going forward, maybe it was like too rough and I, I, I shouldn't do that. These are how I stay under budget. Let's hop into my spreadsheets or my logging and we'll walk through that together. So if we look at June, we can see there's four categories and I just kind of talked about them. These are the main four I look at and we can jump into each sub sequential one. But what you can see basically is the total spend, how much remaining. I don't have the averages going right now and you can also see budget. So the reason I hide this is because I know it, but it just gives me an idea of how much I have remaining that month, and that is how these remaining ones are calculated. And as I mentioned before, you can kind of see the percentage of food and alcohol I have spent, so that is just this over the budget. Last few things I'll mention are, these are how much we've spent in total this year so far, how much we have left, and then these last two are per person, so each of the previous ones divided by two. So that's kind of the very, very high level when I open my Google Drive app or Google Sheets app on my phone. This is what I look at just to give me a high level view. What's probably most important, and let's zoom even more here, is the food and beverage chunk. So what we have here are where the money was spent, how much, and what portion on alcohol. So as an example, Beer Brothers is a bar, so 100% of that spend was on alcohol. And then you can see categories. So G is for grocery store, R is for restaurant, and B is for bar. So nothing too crazy yet. And then meal is where I get kind of a little OCD. So I break down whatever restaurant or meal by coffee, snack, or dessert for C. Breakfast or brunch, jury is still out on that one. L is for lunch, D is for dinner. And this just kind of helps me track how things vary over time. And you can just kind of see the date where I spent so I can do something like, you know, how much did I spend over the weekend? Spent roughly $100 on the first weekend here. I could do things like forecast, like if I wanted to say something like Thursday dinner, drinks, Friday breakfast, and start to see if like we spent 40 there, 10 there, 16 there, like how much is that impacting my budget? And then I can come back to roll up and see you know, what percentage I'm at. So these are all just different ways I can, can use this. Miscellaneous is very straightforward. It's anything that doesn't fit into food and beverage, transportation, or accommodation. So here you can see I spent $3.75, hardly anything, on two library cards, kind of like the service fee. DM is like the CVS or Rite Aid of Germany, or it's a German company, it's all over Europe. So toothpaste and detergent. And then if we did any activities, so thing like a boat tour or 
a food tour or something that would come in here or COVID tests, something like that. But that is miscellaneous. And then transportation is another helpful one. So you can see I do kind of the rows by month. So you can see June, I spent 400, whereas July, it's a much lower. And if we come in here, you can start to see all the individual kind of things I might have under here. So this was the bus to Budva. This is the, the fee that I think is dumb for checking your bag onto the bus, $2. And then anything like getting to and or from a train or bus station, long distance train to Prague. The last thing I'll mention here are flights. So if you see all of these you know, under flights and you're like, why is it 164 per month? I basically just took the sum, which was $823.35, divided it by five, and I just amortized it or spread it across five months. This gives me flexibility to not have any like big blips. And then the last thing I'll mention is I have the averages here for the whole year, and this kind of helps me inform my, my budgets. So I talked about earlier on here how to set the budget. And in the very beginning, it was just guessing, but over time, as I have more information and historical data, I can set these. Obviously, as things change, as you can see, accommodation went up, other things have to change, but I really do just enjoy using historical data to, to project the future. And that can be said as well for this last tab for accommodation. So we'll get to the kind of like forecasting and average later, but what you can see here is basically column A is where I'm at, Column B are the dates. Column C is total paid to Airbnb or whatever service. I'll divide the total nights or the total paid by nights. That gives me price per night. And again, I've got this cool conditional formatting. So the more expensive, the redder, the cheaper, the greener. So good job, Budva. Bad job, Budapest. And then basically I'll take those. Uh oh. I'll take those price per nights and based on what month they're in, I will fill that out. Then this adjustment column started based on us staying places in Mexico where you had to pay for electricity for AC after the fact. The whole year we've only had to pay one adjustment and it was a city tax out of pocket at one apartment on this whole trip. And then you can see for the monthly totals, we've got the conditional formatting. These months that are super cheap have to do with the fact that we weren't there for a full month. And you can lastly see the average, which I desperately try to keep under 1200. We're doing a good job staying under a thousand. And that is basically accommodation. And then the last thing I have is another view. So it's similar to roll up, but it's, it's shown differently. And this is where we can start to see total spend averages over time. You can see the month by months and everything's just cleaner. And the other thing I like besides the averages changing during the year is I can see how much money is remaining. The reason 2020 and even 2021 20, are so low is 2020 was just the two months in Puerto Vallarta. 2021 was just the six months of travel in Mexico. So there you have it. This is kind of a look at how I budget and you know Google Sheets. Please let me know if you have any questions. Let's talk about how things are changing. The last thing I wanted to talk about is how I think things are changing. So obviously like 99% of viewers situation is different than mine. And a lot of, especially the numbers and, and the categorical breakdowns are relative to me and where I'm at with my life right now. So I wanted to kind of look forward to some changes I'm gonna make. The biggest one, and this is something I think about all the time, especially looking forward, but it's just the back of my head. As we stop kind of perpetual traveling or going Airbnb to Airbnb or apartment to apartment, and we do sign a 12 month lease, this will have a very large material impact on budgeting. And most likely it will have an impact on how much we can travel. So right now, because we don't have rent or a mortgage, I can spend a large chunk of our remaining budget on traveling on a short-term Airbnb, whether that's for four weeks or four nights or anywhere in between. Let's say we sign a lease in Lisbon for $1,200 a month. That basically eats my entire like accommodation budget and I would have little to no money each month for travel. So that is something I have to think about. The next thing that I have to think about is insurance. So whether I brought it up or you noticed, I'm currently kind of YOLOing while we travel. And part of the reason I'm doing that is we're in Europe or even in Mexico, spending out of pocket is not like the US where it could bankrupt you. In the US, I actually do have Medi-Cal based on my particular situation where I can control my income. So insurance is something that will impact budgeting going forward. I'm, I guess I should expect something like 50 to $100 for both of us or 50, 50 to $100 per person maybe. 
And so that will just be another piece of the puzzle that we have to account for, but that is something we're currently not paying for that will impact our budget going forward. Babies, currently there's two of us. Our budget is supporting two people. Obviously, at, if there's three of us or four of us, our budget will go up. While I am happy to probably disagree with most people on how much of that will cost, I will not disagree at all that it will increase costs. So that is something I'm probably gonna have to read up on or start like building a buffer or like projecting things because I don't have an idea roughly of what it'll be. We will need a larger apartment for us if there's three or four people. So there's costs there, there's food costs, there's insurance costs, there's lots of costs. So that's something I have to think about and just talking about it, it makes me feel good that I don't need to think about it for a little longer. If you made it this far, thanks so much for watching this video. Please let me know what you thought about this video, what was and was not helpful. Didn't really know how to go about this video, but enough people asked that I did want to try to tackle this. Another thing I'll say is I am becoming more and more active on TikTok. So if you want to see shorter form content that's more regular, like daily, either on the budgeting or finance and investment side, please check out my TikTok. I'll drop the link below, but it is just interesting TV. And if you just search interesting, I should come up. As always, thanks, for much, thanks so much for watching this. And if you want to help support me or help grow the channel or see more videos like this, please subscribe. It's free to you and it helps me a ton. I'll be back with another video in a few days. Thanks for hanging out.